medical care is frequently driven by evidence-based medicine, and evidence-based medicine is driven by the results of randomized controlled trials. Randomized controlled trials, um, uh, typically the results are described in a set of summary results which are believed to um, apply to all patients. However, the summary results of randomized clinical trials often don't apply to all patients, even all patients in the trial, and there are large subgroups of patients that, uh, of trials that show overall benefit that might not benefit at all and even some that might have harm. Conversely, when a trial is negative, there still might be substantial subgroups um, that gain considerable benefit from the, the treatments that, that are, that's being tested. The best way to really understand treatment effect heterogeneity is to have very strong hypotheses about the characteristics of patients uh, that are likely to modify the degree of benefit that a patient gets. Um, if you don't have a uh, very strong prior hypothesis, often the average result may be the best thing you can do. Uh, we also recommend that in addition to looking at the average result, uh, investigators routinely risk stratify their trial populations. The reason we think that risk modeling is an important approach to the analysis of clinical trials is that uh, risk is a fundamental determinant, it's a mathematical determinant of the opportunity for treatment benefit because you can't benefit from a therapy if you're not going to have the bad outcome without the therapy. And uh, there are many times where clinical trials are actually enrolling patients that have a very low risk of the outcome of interest. And these are patients that may be very unlikely to benefit from treatment and if the treatment is associated with any treatment related harm, uh, then the risks of the therapy might totally outweigh the benefits to these patients.